Then we can start uh, for our next talk in the academic track. Uh, I would like to welcome Peter and Laventa. Um, Peter from uh, uh, Monish Uni University, Ireland, and Laventa from Florida International U University. Uh, they both have done a great job in the previous editions of our academic track and also our old friends and uh, contributors to the academic track. So today they will talk about their interesting project about the New Island. Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and hello everyone. It gives me great pleasure to present our work to you today, albeit in hybrid mode. And of course, Levente and I uh, thank the organizing committee for their hard work and their consistent dedication towards the, the academic track at State of the Map. Our presentation today evolved from a suggestion from Levente from months ago about working on something a little bit different and new for both of us. Now, Null Island is very well known in, in OpenStreetMap, but it's also more broadly known in the geospatial world as a socio-technological concept that is somewhat abstract, but has found its way into real databases that we all work with very frequently. In our presentation, we won't specifically dive very deeply into Null Island and its entire history in OpenStreetMap, but rather we would like to consider how Null Island and places and objects like it raise questions in OSM and indeed in other geospatial data provision spaces. So what is it about Null Island that makes it so controversial today? So Null Island is considered a, a joke location. And obviously joke is somewhat subjective here. It's not physically an island and it's not actually a place. But in terms of cartographic errors or geocoding mistakes, this point of zero, zero has actually found itself becoming the home for many applications. So this point zero, zero acts as a null or a default value. The type of value that you assign when something goes wrong in your geospatial application, and indeed, almost like a safety net to ensure that everything does not break as a result of something going wrong. However, the real thing about Null Island is the weather boy that you can see pictured from the Wikipedia page. And another real thing about Null Island is the debate the controversy, the memes, the jokes, the debates that it has sparked among data providers and users over a number of years. Now, what is it that attracts people like us to Null Island? This attraction is not just for computer nerds or geohackers or people beginning uh, their lives as geospatial people. Humans have a very innate attraction to these extreme points and other geographic oddities. For example, where borders meet, where timelines and grid lines cross and intersect, where boundaries have their centers, or where many boundaries meet. The photographs are just a drop in the ocean. And I guess everyone watching today can probably confess to having taken at least one photo like this, and maybe even specifically traveled to a location for that photograph. But we as humans also love the magic of stories 
and fairy tales. Fictional places like Platform Nine and Three Quarters from Harry Potter, Hobbiton from Lord of the Rings, or the beautiful King's Road from Game of Thrones are all fictional places. But those fictional places are realized as film sets within a location embedded in the real world. A recent app called Set Jetters provides an app-like experience to Pokemon Go, where you can visit film and movie locations around the world in a gamified way. So for many reasons, humans or geo-enthusiasts like ourselves are attracted to geographic oddities, quirks in our measurement system, and the demarcation of place, and indeed fictional places. So it turns out we are very interested and drawn to Null Island, somewhere that the author Parker says very clearly does not exist outside of databases. So formally, it's where the prime meridian and the equator 0, 0 intersect each other off the go Gulf, uh, in the Gulf of Guinea. And sometimes, for a variety of reasons, developers and people working with spatial data use zero, zero as a starting or a safety value. Look at the Strava heat map in the center of the screen. There looks to be a lot of cycling and running activity in the Gulf of Guinea, out in the wide ocean. And what does this mean? It probably means cases where there is no GPS reception, a smart device has uh, caused an error while someone is using it to record their activity. Maybe it's incorrect mapping. Maybe it's a purposeful case of incorrect mapping. And we can see from the screenshot of the JavaScript input and conversion values that with certain inputs, Using certain functions in JavaScript, we can end up producing null values. And sometimes this may be the reason that web maps find themselves returning or opening or loading at zero zero or null island. Between the submission of our abstract to State of the Map academic track and delivering this hybrid presentation today, we, we're delighted to say we've had a paper accepted and published in IEEE Access on the topic of Null Island. Now, both the archive and the IEEE paper are open access and the links are available uh, in the presentation. But in the paper, we try to present a more longitudinal history, and I pardon the pun on longitudinal there, on the history of Null Island from its very first appearance on both the internet and before the internet era, and how it has entered the geographic vernacular. And Levente and I have been really bowled over by the reaction to this paper. As you can see from some of the screenshots here, the reaction has been uh, very, very enlightening for us, and we're very proud that this paper has generated the reaction that it has. We had Bloomberg looking for an article. We've had two Italian uh, journalistic outlets looking for interviews. We even had Professor Ernest Davis, a CS professor in New York University, write us a poem about Null Island. This is certainly the first time anyone has written us a poem for our academic work. But at the time of creating this slideshow, there are around 7.8 billion nodes in OpenStreetMap. One particular node 
and it's not actually in the database at the moment, has been the subject of much debate and discussion. And that is Null Island. And as we've said already, it's not an island in the conventional sense, but a mere dot in the middle of the ocean. Now, if we go there, you cannot see an island. You won't see any people, or it's very unlikely you will see any people. All you will see is the permanently anchored weather boy, silently observing the weather in the ocean. Now, there is a node with ID 38150779900, which exists as the weather boy, the soul boy, and it currently, at the time of screenshot, has 125 versions. But the node acting as a locality for Null Island does not exist anymore. And that deletion has caused serious debate one example of which is shown on the screenshot of the OpenStreetMap mailing list from January this year. One of the reasons why a node like Null Island has caused such debate, and indeed such polarization of opinion, is that the underground rule, which all mappers should be aware of means that the locality of Null Island does not exist. It cannot be verified by someone independently to yourself. So if we draw a polygon representing an island or we have a node representing a place there, that cannot be verified independently on the ground. This rule when applied to Null Island and we've taught about it for a long time, is sensible and it's feasible and it's the correct solution in our opinion that the only visible thing there is the weather boy called the soul boy. But it's just a node and why should one node out of billions of nodes or even millions of points of interest trigger such debate? Well, we believe that the debate around Null Island is a lightning rod or even a gateway about the insertion of fictitious fantasy or unverifiable data into the database. The drawing in the center of your screen is from Dante's Divine Comedy and it's the gateway to hell. And from Italian, it translates roughly to abandon all hope ye who enter. Because many feel that allowing fictitious fantasy or even debatable insertion of data into the database will mean that the validity of the database and indeed how people interact with the database may change. So the debate around the insertion of time zones, informal borders, fictional locations, and even the insertion of things like moving objects or events. So for example, festivals, markets, there is tagging available for these type of objects. But if it's not used correctly, the data becomes of less value than it could be worth. What's happening here in the OSM tile access logs, we believe, is there are a lot of web maps configured to load by default at zero, zero. So our best guess is those diagonal lines is caused by the web map then panning or flying to the desired location or being dragged by the user. Broadly speaking, we believe the tile access log here shows us that there are many maps, web map applications configured to start at Null Island as a starting point when the web map application 
is loaded. Now we used Awesome from the University of Heidelberg to look at the history of Null Island edits from 2012 to the date. And we've taken a very small bounding rectangle around uh, the point zero zero. And in QGIS, we show a visualization of the nodes, ways, and polygons. We find that there are 952 node edits, there are 422 line edits, and 105 polygon edits at the time of recording this uh, presentation. Some of the examples are the happenings on or around Null Island. And I draw your attention to the comments around the different versions. Removal of fantasy mapping, removing of null garbage, and then a simple mistake where an Italian library was accidentally placed at zero, zero, but moved back to its proper location uh, within uh, solid ground in Italy. And mistakes happen. It's very easy in JOSM or in ID sometimes to accidentally move a node or even accidentally delete an object. And what we found with some of the edits, for example, the, the, the street in Bruges or the park in Northern California, is that these errors are reverted and fixed very quickly. They're just a simple error mistake that can happen to anyone. But one particular node still exists in Loch Ness in uh, Scotland. And the Loch Ness monster is believed to be fictional, but remains unverified. So the on the ground rule here could be verified one day by incredible chance. And indeed yield a sighting of Nessie. But at time of, of speaking, that sighting has not been verified, but we have amenity equal to monster in Loch Ness as we speak. And here we see Point Nemo, the furthest point from land on the planet, the oceanic pole of inaccessibility. We also see uh, in North America, the continental pole of inaccessibility. And what this is giving us an opportunity as academics and researchers is to reach out to the OSM community and talk more about some quantitative and qualitative studies around mapping of fictional or non-real places. So both of these places can be calculated in a geometric way. We also have quad points geographical oddities, and so on. So we are not advocating for or against the inclusion of Null Island at this moment. We have to debate each inclusion on its merit. But it is worth talking about the impact and meaning, even if there is only a small number of these nodes or objects relative to the OSM database. Our final slide is uh, a thank you. And we're very proud to close our presentation with a poem written by Professor Ernest Davis, as mentioned in New York University. Ernest has given us permission to distribute the link and we suggest that you visit the link and check out the whole poem. It's very eloquently written. And we welcome your comments, your feedbacks, your suggestions, even opportunities to work together on this. If you spot any weird or strange or fictional or odd places in OSM or any global databases, please let us know. But we finish with verse two of the Island of Null. 
at latitude longitude zero degrees, at lone in the midst of immeasurable seas. The fame of the island has spread far and wide. It's in lists and on maps as a place bona fide. As a consequence, many a credulous gull believe that there's really an island of null. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Uh, and we will try to connect us with the hosts, I guess. Uh, yes, maybe a minute. Uh, wait for. Can you also see the audience room? Uh, I am switching on the audience room now. Okay, that's great. Now we can see the audience room. Uh, yes, cool. Uh, and Peter, we had uh, at, uh, one question from the venue list. So um, I will read the question and then you can answer, right? A cool idea. Is there any OSM tag or values you know to map this fairy tale places in OSM? Uh, maybe very interesting to have a story map attached to such place. Thank you for that question. And it's a very interesting idea, but it's something I'm not aware of at the moment, and I'd be delighted to hear more about. But it may have the effect of both making the problem better, but also worse, because we are allowing the fictional fantasy places in to the database with the inclusion and use of this new tag. So there, there is an interesting idea there, but I think it's something that would need to be debated much more widely with the community and to maybe have a set of case studies looking at different points or different objects and how it would benefit or be problematic with this type of uh, additional tagging. Yes, uh, that's great because um, I think like, for example, for the Game of Thrones, like uh, uh, people go to Croatia just to spot the, the skins. So it might be already good to have it in already in the OSM. Mm. Okay. Uh, and uh, are there any other questions raising from the venue list? Or um, because I'm currently not sure how we, um, uh, um, I'm in a separate room. Uh, I'm not sure. Are there any questions maybe from the audience in the room? Uh, yeah, I see Lorenzo, it's taking the. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot for the interesting uh, presentation. Thank you. Um, I have a question you showed this, uh, tile access lock uh, visualization from the OSM tiles and I thought or I was wondering there was only the trace going um, north east in a way uh, in the direction of Europe and do you have uh, uh, do you know why it's not going to the US or to other direction this different intermediate traces <laughs> yes we, we we observed that as well and and initially I thought that I had loaded the wrong tile access data but uh, while there are uh, some very weak traces to other parts of the world uh, with, the, with the map visualization. The vast majority of those traces, for some reason, uh, move towards uh, Europe, northwards towards Europe. So my answer is I'm, I'm not sure, uh, but maybe there are lots of, uh, maybe there's a user, a, a user study required there to figure out maybe that it's European based users who are being provided with maps that are loading from uh, a starting location of, of zero zero. But uh, it, it, it is a, a very strange and an interesting pattern to see on the logs. Cool. So if someone maps uh, includes no islands in your mappings, be careful. 
<laughs> and uh, I think we might have uh, time for another short question from the audience. I'm not yep. sure. Yeah, we've got one here. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I should like to, uh, I am thinking about the difference between fixtures and virtual. I can imagine that uh, uh, Messi, Loch Ness Monster, is fixtures. But virtual, uh, in OpenStreetMap, we map virtual features like bo country borders, administrative borders, ferry routes. They are not fixtures, maybe they are virtual. And so, Null Island between the two categories um, I am thinking about. Thank you. Yeah, th that is a very interesting point that uh, borders, administrative districts are, are not verifiable on the ground, except maybe where there is a, a demarcation line. And that sometimes is used as evidence for supporting places like Null Island. But it's very interesting that you mention virtual because maybe in five or 10 years time, we will be talking about mapping places in virtual spaces such as the metaverse. And then we have the issue about real virtual places. But for now, there, there is still an ongoing debate about borders and maybe the reason why they are included is that they can be verified with independent sources such as, as government or, or uh, trusted agencies such as mapping agencies. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then uh, see you in the next talk. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.